This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. YouTube has made it pretty clear that they don't want people spreading what they call fake news about COVID-19. And by fake news, they mean anything that is published by independent news channels which disagrees with what the major news outlets are saying. And by that, they seem to mean anything which might impact their reach in China, the single largest expanding market in the world for online platforms. But, you know, I'm feeling froggy. I think that I'll jump. Let's see if a small, unmonetized channel can survive the official backlash from speaking up. I may be burning down the channel that I've spent more than a year building up, but I strike a match in every video anyway, because without lighting a fire and heating things up, you just can't have roasted opinions. Let me see. Oh, here's some interesting news. Thanks to COVID-19 outbreaks in multiple packing plants, up to 25% of the total meat production in the United States is furloughed. It's hitting beef production. It's hitting pork production. It's hitting poultry production. Egg farmers and dairy producers are destroying produce because the demand is down due to restaurant closures. Meanwhile, the farmers are taking a big hit on their bottom line. One might think that they could just hatch the eggs that they can't sell, but there's a bit of a problem. Laying hens don't have to be fertilized to produce eggs. The overwhelming majority of those eggs won't hatch because the egg producers don't waste time and money on roosters when the hens lay without being fertilized. Vegetable farmers are now facing a critical juncture too, as crops they plan to harvest and sell to the travel and hospitality industries have no market. Rather than spend money to pick vegetables that will just rot, they are plowing under those crops and replanting. Seed companies and nurseries are taking a big hit too. They have stock to sell, but COVID is complicating shipping. Some states like Michigan have declared gardening and nursery sales non-essential and ordered retail stores to shut down those sales. Meanwhile, private citizens are flooding seed companies with orders as they attempt to plant gardens to supplement their private food supplies. Thus, these companies have not enough food seeds and plants too many decorative seeds and plants, and a reduced capacity to deliver orders to their customers. But planting must still go on for commercial farmers. Unfortunately, they are facing some of the same problems. Seed and agrochemical companies are hard-pressed to get farmers what they need to get their crops started. Tractor and implement sales are down by 50%. Far enough, in fact, that John Deere was forced to pull their economic forecast. Food is still plentiful in America, despite what grocery store shelves suggest. The United States produces enough food to feed the entire country twice over. But COVID is hitting the ag export markets, which means that net ag importer countries are facing potential food insecurity on a national scale. The last thing that the world needs right after a pandemic subsides is widespread famine. And that means that American farmers need to get those crops planted. Transportation needs to get those crops moved to processors. The market for current fresh food production has dried up just as forced layoffs have driven many to food banks. So why not donate fresh food to food banks instead of plowing it under? Then it wouldn't be wasted, right? Well, that may be true, but the food still has to be harvested and processed, even if that processing is just washing vegetables or pasteurizing milk. And then it has to be packaged and shipped to the food banks, many of which couldn't accept the donated fresh foods anyway because they don't have the capacity to refrigerate them. Those facts highlight another fact. People all over the nation are out of work. At last count, 22 million people are unemployed, most of whom have become unemployed in the last month. The majority of those layoffs are temporary due to COVID closures. But the longer America stays laid off in order to control the outbreak, though, the greater the chance becomes that the business where they used to work will not be able to recall them to their jobs. Every day that the nation remains largely closed for business, more jobs will disappear. That's why there's a reopening the country council in addition to the COVID-19 task force. The task force specializes in fighting the outbreak, specifically by ensuring that healthcare has what it needs to treat the disease and by ensuring that the governors are provided with guidelines regarding COVID-19 protective measures. The task force, not the council, 
also came up with guidelines for easing restrictions in order to prevent a massive second wave of infections. The council, meanwhile, is gathering data on the industries of the nation, how the outbreak is affecting them, when and how to assist them, and how much longer these industries can survive COVID-19 restrictions. Open too soon, and that second wave infection happens. Open too late, and the industries will be crippled or even collapse entirely. Congress can help these industries and their employees weather the crisis, but they need better data than what they had during the first round of response aid bills. The SBA rescue funds for loans are already exhausted, and more are being sought. Congress, meanwhile, seems to think that this is a golden opportunity to wring out political gain based on their actions to date. We need clean aid bills with plenty of funding to keep the economy alive. It's on life support, folks. The single biggest market for pork these days seems to be in Congress, though, with an aid bill that started off with a trillion dollars and yet rapidly grew into well over two trillion dollars without adding any additional relief. Talk about cynicism. People all over the country are trying to survive the COVID-19 crisis with their finances and jobs relatively intact and are voluntarily abiding by restrictions. And yet we see Congress spending money that it doesn't have on things that we don't need right now, like ballot harvesting. The Kennedy Center received $25 million in financial relief due to the crisis. They promptly laid off their entire orchestra to conserve the money provided them to keep the center running, including to make payroll. At least they didn't donate $5 million to the DNC, which is merely a rumor spread by people pissed off that 60% of the workers were furloughed right after the relief package meant to keep them on payroll was received. And as for those restrictions, well, limiting business to essential businesses only makes sense as it reduces the number of people out wandering around and by correlation, the number of potential transmissions of COVID. But if people are abiding by sensible social distancing like remaining in their cars, then why prevent them from gathering in a parking lot to conduct religious services by radio? That kind of suppression of First Amendment rights is how we get protests, and suppressing protests, which are abiding by social distancing restrictions, is how we get protests which completely ignore them. People are willing to abide by common sense restrictions, but that tolerance doesn't extend to a blanket write-off of their constitutional rights. Nor is it a suicide pact by proxy in which they agree to watch the next Great Depression roll in with smiles on their faces. Nor are they content to listen to major media outlets parrot the CCP party line on this. The virus originated in China, not America. While the virus was not genetically engineered as a bioweapon, the only research lab repository for such a virus in China happens to be just down the road from that infamous wet market in Wuhan. The U.S. intelligence community is investigating the origins of this virus now to determine if a lab containment accident released the virus perhaps through lab animals sold at the Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market. State Department officials have already expressed urgent concerns about the containment procedures at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. We don't want to hear propaganda right now. We want the facts. The outbreak was not contained properly, and the Chinese government forced people back to work before they made certain that their COVID-19 outbreak was completely done. Now they are experiencing a resurgence in the disease. We cannot trust the reported numbers either. While the American health care system reports all deaths in patients confirmed or even presumed to have COVID-19 as COVID-19 deaths, China is increasing their official death counts by 50% because they didn't count all the COVID deaths in the first place and cannot explain with any degree of credibility how nearly 21 million cell phones were shut off permanently during the outbreak. Well, they cannot explain it to the average person's satisfaction, at least. The AP seems to be satisfied by the explanation that Chinese cell phone users commonly carry multiple SIM cards for each phone. We have officials in the United States acting as if blaming China for COVID-19 is blaming the Chinese people for the pandemic. Seriously? No one with a shred of common sense blamed Chinese people for the COVID-19 outbreak. We did blame the Chinese government, though, for letting it happen in the first place. We blame the Chinese Communist Party for lying about it to conceal their guilt. Some politicians may think that it's xenophobic to refer to the novel coronavirus as the Chinese virus or the Wuhan virus, but Donald Trump isn't about to let anyone forget that the virus came from Wuhan, China. And why? Because the Chinese Communist Party is desperate to pin this virus on anyone else but them and their horrific incompetence. The CCP created this dystopian nightmare, and the major media outlets are feeding it. 
See how the same statement by Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is spun two different ways. CNN actually reports that Abe has issues with how the WHO is run, which he says must be addressed after the outbreak. While Bloomberg reports that Abe has called for nations to support the WHO after Donald Trump suspended funding to the World Health Organization. Same exact quote, folks. Same exact interview. Two completely different interpretations, one of which is definitely CCP party line. Those issues might have something to do with the fact that the WHO has reported China's official information releases as gospel truth. Now, I'm no physician, but given the spread of the virus, even in January, anyone who's watched movies about pandemics could see that human-to-human transmission was happening. I'm also no politician, and I don't assume that the WHO is filled with politicians either. But have enough common sense to know that the Chinese government is not known for telling the unvarnished truth unless it suits them. They aren't above shipping flawed, unusable PPE to other countries, and then claiming that it is disaster relief. Their response to the outcry at the unusable equipment? Why, to bottleneck all shipments, of course, including those from foreign-owned companies like 3M, by requiring another license to export N95 masks and other PPE made in China. 3M actually makes most of their N95 masks in China, a common situation when it comes to the manufacturers of medical PPE worldwide. Yet while countries all over the world are scavenging for N95 masks whenever and wherever they can be found, Tens of millions of 3M manufactured N95 masks are sitting in warehouses in China while the Chinese government takes its time deciding if the quality of those masks is sufficient to allow them to be exported. Mind you, these masks are made by 3M, whose quality control is high enough that they have been shipping those masks everywhere. Yeah, I can easily blame the Chinese government without blaming the Chinese people. The people of China aren't holding up critical medical equipment or shipping unusable gear, or for that matter, lying about their involvement in a global pandemic. They aren't forcing themselves to go back to work before the epidemic is over, or welding fences around neighborhoods which have no gates, or trying to force everyone who looks different from them out of their country. But the Chinese government is. We will survive the pandemic. Our economy will recover, although it will take at least some time to do it. But once this is over, the Chinese Communist Party needs to be held to account by everyone in every country, everywhere. Now go ahead and burn my channel down, YouTube. Show everyone that you care less about the truth than that sweet, sweet Chinese access.